Hi everybody, this is Tor Storley, and I am back with another video. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new DuckDB UI. Now, the DuckDB UI can be found in the latest version of DuckDB, DuckDB 1.2.1. So in order for you to actually try this out, you need to install the latest DuckDB CLI. So I'm going to show you how we can do that in this video. So you can go to DuckDB and to the installation page. And as you can see here, I chose Windows. There is the type of architecture you want to use. And also, as you can see here, there is the link that you want to download, meaning 1.2.1, whether it's Windows or Mac or Linux, whatever you happen to use. There's also this button up here, click here, and you'll end up on this landing page. Go to resources, go to the blog, and notice there's a blog post written for DuckDB UI. So make sure uh, you check that out. It's written on March 12th, and when you click into that, you can see this is the article, and it tells you that DuckDB team and Mother Duck created this UI extension. So what you have here is a video, a little video clip, to how to use it or set it up, and also the commands you're going to need. For example, if you're going to run this from a command window, you'd call DuckDB, the executable, and then you pass the flag dash UI. That will open up a local host with a port number so you can run it in your browser. If you're in the CLI, you can simply run this command, call start underscore UI, parenthesis, parenthesis, semicolon, and that will open it up. So as you can see down here, here is a screenshot of what it will look like when you do that. And you can see there's all kinds of metadata, there's all kinds of dynamic charting happening here. And there's some features, so make sure you check this out, get a better feel for how to use this particular UI tool. If you open the terminal, what you have to do, you have to say docdb, that will actually point to the executable. And then what you do is, in order to activate the UI, you do it as a flag. So you say dash UI, like this. And when you hit enter now, it will do the same thing as it did when you open it in the DuckDB CLI. And as you can see here, it opens the same localhost. And if you look at the command window, you can see it gives you the same information as you got directly in the CLI because it simply opened this shell, the CLI shell, and then runs it. So that's how you open up the DuckDB UI. So if you look here, there's a notebook that comes with it. You can run this directly against this memory database. So you see attached, if not exist, memory as memory. So you can run this just like you do with any Jupyter notebook. So you click run, it runs it. Then what we can do is we can create a table and in this case, it's simply going to download this Parquet file. Uh, so let's try that, and we run that, and it's done. So look over here now in this attached database section. You can see there's a trains table created, and it tells you estimated rows. It tells tell you how many columns it has, and if you click on it, you can see you're getting metadata about it. So you can see down here, here's all the fields, and they. You, you can see it's kind of nice because this is a date field and has a little date icon. This is a text field, has a T. This is a numeric, so this is a big int, one, two, three. And this is another text field, var car text field. And here's a timestamp, it has a little clock icon. So it gives you like a nice way of looking at it. And you can also search for columns and you can preview the data. So as you can see here, when you click this icon, you're previewing the data. You can look at departure times, for example, and you can hover over this so you can see it has a nice dynamic uh, uh, representation of the data, underlying data here for this column. It, it has a lot of good stuff here. Also, you can see here, you can expand on this. One thing you can also do is you can attach your own database. So here, I'm going to say attached database. And I'm going to say plus file type. So what I can do is I can point to a database, like for example, my stocks database or my financial statement database. So let's do that one. I'm going to add that. So this is the financial statement database. Here you can see all kinds of, of uh, tables that I have. I got income statement data, as you can see here. Uh, I can actually look at it. 
And you can see here, here's my income statement data for AbbVie. So you can actually look at columns. So here we got the 2020 for income statement, uh, 2020 numbers, so to speak. Now this doesn't really tell you much. You basically have to filter it. So if you look here, there's an account number. So in case you're interested in a specific account, uh, you could filter this stuff. So let's take a look at how you could filter this stuff. So one way you can do this is just hover over the table that you're interested in. And you have these three dots here. So you click on that and you can say query in current notebook. And when you do, it builds a query for you, as you can see here. Here's the query it built and it just returns 100 records in this case. But if I don't want that, I can just remove the limit here. I don't think it's going to make a difference, but let me just run it anyway. So there's only 20 rows in this data set anyway, so it's not a big deal. If you have a lot of data, obviously you can filter by some kind of attribute in one of the columns. But here, see there's a filter here, and what it will do is you just point to whatever account you're interested in, for example, and you set it, uh, say it starts with, maybe I want a net revenue or something, net, and let's apply that. And it says, it found a bunch of net, as you can see. So if I want to be more specific and see revenue and then apply it again. So now you can see I'm getting one row here with the net revenue. So that's one way you can do this. And then when you're done working on the filters, you simply remove the filter by clicking here. And then you can actually just uh, say done and it should come back with the original table. Yeah, so there's not too much to say about this. It's pretty straightforward. The only other thing is you can see you can actually pivot stuff here. And I haven't played around too much with the pivot. If you have some kind of table with categories in it, that might be a better way of doing it. So anyways, I just wanted to introduce you to the DuckDB UI. Try it out. It has good information. You know, it gives you histograms. It's dynamic charts. It gives you the basic statistics, you know, the quartiles, and it gives you mean standard deviation over your data. So yeah, it's, it comes in handy and it's another tool in your DuckDB toolbox. I hope you like this video and if you do, give me a like please and consider subscribing to my channel. It'll be wonderful. Have a great day, great night, wherever you happen to be in the world. We'll see you in the next video.